Hello and welcome. Um, fifth video um, from um, Mechanics Statistics paper S that I wrote recently. Today is uh, the recording day is the 5th of uh, July. Uh, I've done, I think that's the fifth question that I'm doing. I isolated a few questions. I've done um, two questions from uh, the statistics section, uh, binomial and Venn diagram. And uh, I've done also uh, the two first questions on mechanics, which are sort of like fairly mild and quite interesting. One was on vectors, the other one was on calculus kinematics. And I think I picked one more question, which uh, uh, is actually causes problems, this type of questions, is um, something to do with equilibrium of some kind of rod against a peg. As you can see there from the diagram, lots of information to be given. So um, with mechanics, I want to say, Please do not read all of this and try to understand the question or get what the question is asking. Total waste of time. Identify very quickly what the topic is and then go read bit by bit. My advice is not to annotate this diagram. This is not the diagram for the question. This is the diagram that is there designed to help you follow the text. You draw your own diagram. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to be reading and filling in the information as you're going along. So you trust me. That what I'm doing is what the question is uh, is actually saying. So um, I might do it on a piece of paper uh, and then bring that piece of paper as I need it into the to the board that I'm using with the with the board markers. So <coughs> what do we have in there? Okay, um, I don't know. Maybe we can actually put a little bit of the question there because the diagram needs to be quite large. Please, uh, another thing which goes wrong in, in questions on mechanics in general in general is people doing kind of like uh, diagrams that will fit into the back of a to, to a postage stamp, which is quite irritating and annoying. Okay, the figure above shows a uniform a rigid rod AB. So there's my rod. Quite large, as you can see, and this is the ground resting on a rough peg. So there's my ground, and this is the rod, and is rust, uh, resting on a rough peg. The rod has weight W newtons and length six meters, and rests on the peg at the point C, which is marked in the in the picture. So first of all. Let's put the peg here. So we're looking at the cross section there. And at the same time, uh, let's label uh, some of this uh, quantity. So that is A here. This is B here. Uh, the peg is C. <coughs> the rod has weight W newtons. Um, now for something like this, I'm going to have to mark the weight here, but I need to keep track is it is the rod uniform because i didn't actually yeah, uniform rigid rod so that's exactly halfway not just looks it is w newtons and never mark units um and length six meters with this type of questions again i do not put the length until the very end um and rest on the peg at the point c where a to c is four meters so um, i've been told this is six meters this is uniform, so it's going to be three and three. This is four, so that's three, one, two. But I'm going to mark it at the very end. Now, other forces immediately that need to be marked. I've got in there reactions. The reaction must be, of course, the normal ones. Uh, normal means at right angles. So that's an R and that is an N. <clears throat> the coefficient of friction... So, of course, the peg is rough, as <coughs> you were saying earlier on, <laughs> between the rod and the peg is 0 0.5. So, which way will it be acting? Well, the friction will be acting, will want the rod to slide down. If you can imagine, it will want to slide off and fall into the ground, it won't be moving upwards. But the question is, is the equilibrium limiting? Because if it's limiting, it means I can write it as mu n. <coughs> Um, so I'm searching further down, blah, blah, blah. And later on in the question, it says, given the equilibrium is limiting both at A and at C. So there's friction here as well. But let's concentrate where we are in the question, the second line there. Sorry, the coefficient of friction between the rod and the peg is 0.5. Since the equilibrium is limiting at both 
places. This is going to be, of course, half n because, of course, the mu, the mu at this point is a half. The end A of the rod rests on rough ground. And again, friction will try to stop it from sliding. The rod wants to slide downwards like this. So the friction here, this one is going to be mu r. We don't know what mu is because it says the coefficient of friction between the rod and the ground is mu. The rod is inclined at an angle theta, <coughs> theta to the horizontal. So let's get a different color pen. So where's the angle theta? There it is. It's also marked in the picture. <coughs> in the points A, B, and C, lying in the vertical plane, perpendicular to the ground, blah, blah, blah. And what we have to show, and I'm going to put it up here, that your mu is this mess. So this, um, I've done five videos on from this particular paper. Uh, the first four will have been quite mildish for the difficulty of the paper, of course. But this one is looks a bit scary. Doesn't look too good, does it? Okay. So this is the, the picture. And I'm going now to the solution. I have recorded the information from the question. Uh, and let's, let me just take just this sheet of paper that has the diagram. Rest it here. And continue with um, actually <clears throat> continue with this diagram. <clears throat> this kind of questions they have um, usually <coughs> um, three equations: resolving vertically, resolving perpendicular, so sort of not vert vertically, horizontally. So um, this way, this way, and then taking moments about one particular place and the question where do we take moments it hardly matters normally where there's more than two forces so usually at a or at c that you will get rid of these two forces okay um i'm gonna do some work i'm gonna take moments about a i think and therefore i need perpendiculars to the rod from a from every other point that has forces except the point that i'm taking moments and i need to mark also some more angles, this is theta. And because I'm going to resolve vertically and, and, and um, horizontally, I also need on the point C, this is my vertical, this is my horizontal there. Um, so I'm preparing the picture. This is, as I said, a difficult question. So that is uh, alternate angle. So that's theta here. Uh, if it's theta here, it'll be theta there, because so, that's a right angle. There's another right angle there. And of course, this and this are what you call corresponding angles. So I think my picture now is complete. <coughs> and I'm going to have to use this picture to write some equations. So now, as I said in the beginning, and I've already forgotten, I'm putting the lengths in. And that's a 3, that's a 1, and that's a 2. So it's quite handy. Uh, I tend to use certain colors. Probably you haven't actually noticed in uh, my, my diagrams. I tend to mark the lengths in blues. I tend to mark angles in greens and forces in reds and other bits and pieces in uh, the pinks and the purples and I got browns and so on. So it does help for me about doing a specific way the question. It does help long term. So the first thing that I'm going to do, looking at this picture, I'm going to take moments about the point A. So this is hopefully it's going to give me some information. So this says moments about A. So these two forces have no moment because, so let me just move that up because probably out of view. Uh, I'm taking moments about A. So the R and the mu R have no moment because they're going through the pivot. There is another force that has no moment. It's the half N because the line of action of this force Okay, it's also going to the pivot. So all I'm going to have is just purely n times, because this is perpendicular, that I don't need to resolve it, it's just the whole thing, times 4 from the pivot is equal to, when I split this w, it's going to have a component there, which has no moment because it's going to the pivot, but this is at right angles and this will have a component. w cos theta is equal to w cos theta times 3 from the pivot. So this is the moment equation, which simply will say 
n is equal to uh, 3 quarters w cos theta. Um, is this a, a decent equation? Well, it is a decent equation because if you look at the show, um, there is no w in there. Okay? And somehow I need to get rid of this, this, this w that is appearing in there. So, next thing is to resolve vertically and horizontally. Let's see what happens from there. If I resolve now vertically, let's see which forces are still there. And I have forces up equal forces down. Up, I have the R entirely upwards. From this line here, I have the component of N which falls into that. That's the cos N cos theta plus N cos theta. I also have a component here from the half N, but this is your sign if I resolve it there. So it's plus a half N uh, sine theta. So that's so far there. And that is equal to W. So this is now the second um, equation. Uh, can I do anything with that? Maybe I can combine the ends in there. Again, I'm not sure. I need the third equation. And uh, I, I, once I see it, then we'll, we, we'll see. We'll decide rather what is probably the best action. So horizontally, force to the left equals force to the right. To the right, I've got the mu r. Let's have a look at it if it's out of view. The mu r is to the right. Uh, this is vertical, vertical. I also have to the right the component of a half n, which will fall into this. So that plus a half n, plus a half n cos theta. So that's resolving the half n into this dotted line. And I go one force, which is pulling to the left, is the component of n. n and now we're going to go sine theta. There's, of course, no length here. It's just resolving. There's no moment. So these are all the equations in the problem. I don't think I need anything else on, from this diagram with the exception of just check that I have done it correctly if I need to refer back to, the, to, to, to my information. So at the moment, I'm trying to think. I've got three equations. That's one. That's two and that's three. And I'm trying to think what is the best way of dealing with this and i think the sensible way of dealing with this is to actually move the n which i have in the box in there into both of these equations see what happens so i'm going to say well r plus three quarters w cos theta that's this n here times another cos theta so it's going to make that squared plus a half times three quarters, oops, W cos theta. Why is a quarter? There's a half, isn't it? Half uh, cos theta times the sine theta there gives us W. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Mu R plus a half N. Substitute in this box again. W cos theta times another cos theta, which was already there. Let's put the cos squared. Getting a little bit lazy is equal to N, which is three quarters W cos theta. That's this bit here times the sine theta. Just uh, pausing a little bit, tidy this a little bit further. And we got R. three quarters w cos squared theta plus three eighths w cos theta sine theta is equal to w and uh, we have mu r plus three eighths W cos squared theta is equal to three quarters W cos theta sine theta. I'm looking again at the show. Mu and thetas is the only thing that should be left in there. Somehow I need to lose the R's. 
I can lose the R by doing a substitution. R is equal to move this to the other side and plug in there. But I'm going to do it a slightly different way, which is a variant of that. Um, I'm sure you might have seen it in my solutions or your teacher might have used it a few times, I'm sure, in the class. So I'm going to write this equation first. Mu R is equal to, I'm not going to say what I'm doing, just see if you can read my mind. So that's that minus that. W cos squared theta. And I'm going to write underneath R is equal to, and I'm going to do the same thing on this particular one which is W minus uh, three quarters W cos squared theta minus three eighths. And uh, we have here three eighths, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? Where's the line? I'm losing the plot now. Is I'm on this line here, three eighths W cos theta sine theta. So I just rearrange them again you might be thinking i want to put this r in there you can but i'm going to divide both equations now side by side so if i divide mu r divide by r i eliminate completely the r though the r is gone and i have just the mu left on the left hand side which is basically what i've got and now by having now a fraction which i'm going to write three quarters W cos theta sine theta. You can see what's going to happen to the W's. How old is the W's too? So it's a, it's a really nice way of, of dealing with uh, this problem because at least I know, I, I don't know if I'm correct. I hope I haven't made any silly errors and lost bits, but it definitely has the correct structure because now on the next line, my mu, all the W's, you see it's five terms there, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and of course, uh, I don't like the signs of this, so I'm, I have definitely have made a mistake. And you can see sometimes how you can see your mistakes. Um, you're gonna have there a minus on the top, and I got a minus, and there I got a, I should be having a plus in there, and instead I got a, or actually I have, it might be this one, is this one, it doesn't matter. I'm just looking at these quantities and I should have one minus uh, and I have uh, two there. So um, one of these quantities, which one, where is that coming from? That's coming from this one, which is of course uh, the R and this will both be minus. I have a copied it correctly, perhaps I have copied it incorrectly from the, from the question. It doesn't matter. At the moment, I'm just giving you what's going through my head. But have a look at the five terms. One, two, three, four, five. W, 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 W. Goodbye, my friend. So we have three quarters. I'm putting all the work in so we can all follow what is going on. Three eighths. Cos squared theta. One minus three quarter cos squared theta minus, I can see that there might not be a mistake in there because I'm gonna get sec squareds and sec squareds will go into tan squareds with my swap the sign. So I'm thinking a little bit of ahead and um, this is my next line. And possibly, I don't wanna go too far down. I'm just gonna make some space here and continue, of course, you continue writing straight underneath, I maybe could have written there, but it's too late now. Okay, what I'm gonna do next there, the next, I'm gonna do it in steps as I promised. Uh, four, eight, eight, multiply top and bottom of this fraction by eight. So it's gonna give me three quarters of eight, which is six, cos theta sine theta, and that's three eight, so it's gonna be minus three, so I'm getting an integer numbers there because it's annoying. Times eight, so I'm getting a three quarters of eight, which is minus six cos squared theta minus three cos theta sine theta. So that's this line with now nicer numbers. And our expression has just tans. I can see the six minus three. <coughs> 
and I can see how to get this. If I divide this, I'm just putting it here, because I'll do it twice basically within the question, and you divide by cos squared theta, one of the causes will cancel that, and now we'll create tan. So when I divide this term and this term by cos squared, you'll get a tan. So that's six tan theta, and this will be a minus three tan theta. That's this bit here. When I divide, of course, the cos squared will disappear completely. So that's gonna be a minus six. That's dividing that. What was this eight? Well, that's eight. When I divide it by cos squared of theta, it becomes eight sec squared theta. So this is what I was mumbling on earlier on. And I said, it might sort the signs out and it will sort the signs out. Yeah, I can see it now. There's no mistake in there because we are a few lines from the end now. We have practically what's there apart from the sec squared. There's of course an identity from pure maths, which we, of course, we must remember it's not being given. So sec squared is one plus tan squared of theta minus the six minus the three tan theta and everything falls into place. Mu is equal to six tan theta minus three. Eight minus six is two. 8 lots of tan squared theta from this bracket, minus 3 tan theta, and I'm not rewriting it, it's exactly the same thing if you look at the show, and the question is now complete. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. This is quite a messy question, um, and it's, it's difficult. I mean, a lot of people just think the difficult bit is this algebra. The difficult bit is not this algebra. The difficult bit is what people do not spend enough time, which is this diagram. This diagram in mechanics, I cannot stress how important it is to have a diagram which is large, colorful if necessary, and having a lot of information. I call it a detailed diagram. Okay, enough of this video, otherwise it'll get very long. Um, I will see you very soon. I'm signing out. Bye for now.